Welcome to episode 15 of our Wudao Xiao tutorial series. Um, this one has a really long track, and this will be the final uh, tutorial going over some of the new things. I'm still going to put a couple more videos up just going over new songs and giving them more notation and kind of sharing some tracks that I've been playing that I really like and really interested in. But this video will be the last one that will have new material, so to say. Um, and it's the last one because I feel like this is one of the things that is nice to have the notation for and it's nice to be able to play it, but it's also one of those things that you're very rarely going to come across. Um, and, and most of the times, even in this track, you'll see it'll be played with another instrument. So normally the place of this notation will be taken by a piano or by a gujen or by something different than the shop. Okay? So this week I'm playing D key flute and we're playing the track Big Fish. It has lots of different covers and variations that people play. This is really popular. Um, so there's Xiao and Diza together, there's Xiao and uh, piano, there's singing versions of it, lyrics and things like that. So there's lots of different versions. I've kind of shortened it and made it a little bit different for the Xiao so we can play all the parts. Um, so this is a little bit special notation just for here. Um, though there's lots of other notation you can find for this and lots of other covers. The notation I want to explain this week and the fingering pattern that we want to go over is the high, the highest parts of the high octave. Um, so you'll see here, in halfway through the song in notation, you have one full phrase, one full sentence uh, that's in parentheses. This is actually another separate instrument normally. So this part will be filled in by a piano most often in this song. And you'll notice every single one of them almost across the line has a dot above. So they're all high scale. Um, we've done a lot of the high scale already. We've done like starting with the Do. If we're playing Toins of Sol, we're playing five as low as note in the G key. I'm gonna be playing on the D key flute. Just disregard that depending on what you're playing. You can play the same notation, um, just in the lower or higher octave, depending on what you like in the sound. Again, I prefer this D key flute, so it sounds a lot deeper if you're trying to match it. Um, but anyway, this D, uh, this do note here, uh, starting with one, we've gone over like one, two, three, four, and five, up to fa. Um, so those the fa and the, and the sol, they get they get shorter. So we've gone over the notation as far as like from this do, building up in the higher octave from do one to re two, mi three, fa four, and sol uh, five. So we've gone through those ones. Those are those are pretty often, you'll find those quite often in different tracks because that's not too high. But then if we go any more than that, it's a really big octave, uh, really big range changes. So we don't use that as often. But to go over that notation, if we said one, two, three, four, and five for the high octave, when we get to six, the easiest way to play this note on most flutes is to remove the ring finger, add the thumb, and the pinky. So you have these kind of like three on the top, two on the bottom. Okay, and the center is open. This will be six or la in the high octave. Okay, then we get into some funky changes. Uh, there's lots of ways you can do this. I'll explain in a second. But the next way, the easiest way to be seven would be put everything back on, lift the middle finger on the left hand, the top. So you're just missing the sound pole number three. And then when we go to the next one, we have one more uh, double dotted I. So you have like the fourth octave basically you have low middle high and now higher then when we get to that we're going to put the middle finger back down and take off these so we have one skip two three and four skip five six and seven and eight okay so that will be the highest of the high dough so this will be the third dough uh, dotted twice above okay so we have from high octave beginning we have one two three four five, six, seven, and eight. Okay, like it's kind of confusing to change back and forth. Um, and typically if we have one, you're just gonna have one mixed in a little bit more comfortably. The reason I picked this song, the Big Fish song, is because we use almost all of them, um, with the exception of Fa. Yeah, with the exception of Fa. So, so that's a really nice progression because it gives you a chance, it's all half beats, it's clear, it's a catchy rhythm. So it gives you a chance to kind of play each one of those. Um, but like I said, you're rarely, very rarely going to use all these in a track. Um, like I said, even this will be with the piano. So the high octave is very, very nice and easy to reach. You just move your hand up a scale and you can play the same notation. Um, with the flute, it gets very complicated. So it kind of sticks out in the track. 
Um, but I play it just so you can get a feeling of what you can do with those. Um, so you can cover those with the flute. It has quite a big range. One of the things uh, a lot of people have been asking about with the high octave, you can play the high octave and the middle octave with all the same finger notations for, as the first scale when you build up. It's just the, the breathing pattern gets really, really specific and tight, and it's easy to make a flat or a sharp note. Um, so using this finger notation is a little bit easier to get those different high notes. And these will take you a while, like I'm still working on these often, they don't always work all the time, just because you don't really practice them in tracks. So you can take them out and, and just kind of go through different scales and go through different build ups and build downs to get the feeling for them. But otherwise, if you're just playing tracks, you're playing songs as you practice, you won't come across them very often. And therefore, you might not get that much practice with them. So depending on what your purpose is, you know, if you're more of a casual player, I'd say these aren't so important to master. Um, but if you're really interested in like kind of discovering the full range of your flu and trying out different breathing patterns, especially if you're going to jump into different flutes, it's a really great way to kind of acclimate yourself to play different ways. And then you really start to understand the breathing um, when you try to play these kind of notes. It takes a while. These ones, uh, like I said, these will take the longest to practice. But keep going through them, think about those finger notations. And, and in the beginning, don't be afraid to be loud. <laughs> Just because playing some of the higher pitch notes, you probably realize it's a lot easier to play if you're really pushing. Um, hopefully, you want to get those to a moderate level. You, like, you want to be able to increase the sensitivity and lower the volume so you're getting a more precise breathing and less just <sighs> explosion. Um, but in the beginning, I think find the feeling is okay. Kind of like as long as you can get a, a steady sound and you're not like stuttering at your, with your breathing, is okay. You can get a little louder. Uh, go somewhere outside or something quiet uh, where you won't get yelled at or, or uh, pull the caps on and and uh, just just kind of practice through these um, find your feeling be a little loud and then slowly find the place where you can do it softer um, so that'll be the high pitch octave that's the last thing uh, that I really want to go through um, like I said if you're if you're up to this point hopefully you've got a pretty good understanding of everything else and you've kind of found your own rhythm and found like oh how you can what you need to practice and what you need to work on um, i'm going to still keep putting some videos out on mondays this has been a really great experiment for myself to kind of uh, try to explain what i feel about the flu so i've been studying a lot more as well um, learning on a lot of new things doing this so it's been a really great chance a lot of this is even if you know this doesn't make things really clear for a lot of people i hope you enjoyed it if you found this video and, and, and know that this is a really great experience for me to kind of like explain it to be able to understand it better myself. So it's a really great experience and I really have enjoyed this. Um, so I'm going to keep trying to put some videos up, um, but just more straight tracks with notation connected to it like I've been doing. So that way if you're still following along or you have someone else who wants to start flu, you can have other tracks to show and to listen to and to practice yourself. Um, so keep tuning in, um, keep subscribing, keep liking if you can. Um, all that really helps, and it's uh, it's been really exciting. So we'll see you next Monday from here on out. I'll be putting a couple other videos up, kind of summarizing some of the information and moving forward into some other tracks. So if you have any references, and once again, if you have any songs that you're interested in, you can leave a comment below, and uh, we can try to put those in the full track upcoming videos. Okay? Until then, keep practicing. Enjoy the high notes. Don't let them frustrate you. Um, but if you ever do, just go back and play the intro to the song because it's very fun. Okay? See you next time.